Hello and very warm welcome to the Arise interview. 60 glorious minutes of multifaceted discussions where we speak to the newsmakers as well as ordinary people doing extraordinary things and we feature the voices at the heart of the stories. I am Christian Nogodo. Thanks so very much for joining us. Coming up in the next hour, high hopes have been shattered, expectations have been cut short, the heightened tension about the controversial presidential election has tremendously lessened or fizzled out, at least for now. But at the moment, it's no longer a case of who is perceived to have won the presidential election. Now, it is about who was declared the winner by the Electoral Commission, coupled with the judgment of the Presidential Election Petition Tribunal, which dismissed the election petition filed against President Muhammadu Buhari by the opposition PDP and its presidential candidate, Atiku Abubakar, that challenged the outcome of the 23rd February elections. Now, what are the chances of the opposition PDP in trying to reclaim what it describes as a stolen mandate and a barefaced subversion of justice? Those are their words, not ours. We'll get the political angle of that judgment in a moment. It was no doubt a long, drawn-out proceeding that lasted for over nine hours. The courtroom was fully packed with bigwigs who were keenly following the proceedings. In delivering the judgment between President Muhammad Buhari and Atiku Abubakar, the tribunal had ruled each of the five arguments by the PDP and Atiku Abubakar against the APC. The five-man panel, led by Justice Garba Mohammed, said the petitioners failed to prove their petition beyond reasonable doubt and went ahead to dismiss the petition in its entirety. However, President Muhammadu Buhari has magnanimously extended a hand of fellowship to the opposition moments after the presidential election petition tribunal upheld his victory in the February 23rd, 2019 election. Before we speak to our panelists, first, here is a reaction from the tribunal judgment. Officer Khalid is not a qualification. I wouldn't say I'm disappointed. I would just rather say that um, it is the entire judiciary that is on trial. And as to what we want to make of the country, I can't, I can't call it disappointment. I never get disappointed in a case. That is why we have appellate levels. I would rather say I am dissatisfied. Uh, what will I say again? You say I'm happy. I, I, I say I'm happy and we thank Almighty God for giving them the, the wisdom to have delivered this sound judgment. We are quite pleased that today the presidential election tribunal have settled the election petition and have found that the mandate given to President Muhammad Buhari and his vice president by Nigerians have been upheld by the court. So this will give the much needed boost so that the president will continue to deliver on electoral promises and continue to build a Nigeria that works for all. So I congratulate all. And even for the, all the petitioners, I urge them to embrace and support the mandate given to President Muhammad Buhari by Nigerians so that we can be less distracted. And for more analysis on the tribunal's judgment, looking at it from the political angle and its implication on the nation's judicial system, I'm now being joined by, from my extreme uh, left, is Kabiru Shitu. He's the chairman of the Advanced People's Democratic Alliance. And on my immediate left, we have uh, Mike O'Meary, who was one time director general of the National Orientation Agency and today is the chairman of Timbuktu Media Solutions, as well as uh, Ikenga Ugochinyere, who is the spokesperson of the Coalition of United Political Parties. Gentlemen, it's a loaded panel here. Um, of course, some partisan and 
I would say some not partisan. But before we look at the political implications of the tribunal's judgments, let us look at the magnanimity of Mr. President extending the olive branch, you know, to the opposition. It's like saying, look, there is no victor, there is no vanquish. Let me start with you, Mike. Well, thank you for the opportunity once again, Christian. Um, the president, like any other president of Nigeria at any point in time, is supposed to act. After victory at the polls, you, you govern the country. You, you don't just govern the people. You, you, you don't rule a people, but you govern a nation. He is a father of Yes, all. you govern a nation. And uh, if you're governing a nation, you need to have all hands on deck. The good, the not so good. And everyone who has talent, capacity, or some degree of, uh, you know, of um, skill to contribute, you bring them on board. Run the country so that citizens will feel not just a sense of belonging, but a sense of participation and ownership of not just policies, but of the presidency itself, of all the, the arms of government and structures of government and governance. So it's a good thing he's extending a hand of uh, fellowship, and that is what should be the, the duty of every other elected official in all the strata of our society. It is not a winner takes all, it is not an us versus them. And besides, uh, from what I hear, the process is not conclusive yet, it's not concluded, so as we move on, I think the president's decision is in order. Very well, very well said. I mean, that, uh, that's why he said uh, even before he brought his cabinet on board, he had said his government is going to be an inclusive one. Um, Ugo Chinere, you're the spokesman of the coalition of uh, united political parties, and you've always been on the other side of the divide. But how would you, how would you, you know, uh, expatiate on the judgment and the president's uh, call for unity? You cannot uh, take what does not belong to you and be offering uh, calling people to the peace table. If you are honest, you then relinquish what you are holding, which does not belong to you. To us, that's a Greek offer. We know th just such statement without respect to the president, the opposition doesn't take it serious. This is not the first time he's, he's making this kind of comment. He, even, even on security issues, we make such a uh, comment. People working under him don't even get implemented, and he doesn't even know. So it's just normal media comment that he issued. He knows deep down in his heart he's not ready to bring everybody on board, and he's not ready to do the right. So we're not looking at that. We're focusing more at our uh, effort at the Supreme Court to reclaim the mandate that uh, he took away from the opposition, the mandate that was freely given to us by the people. But it's important uh, I, I say this. The president is not sincere and has never been sincere. There was a room for him to get these things right which is signing of the electoral act. I came here, I told you that this is going to be a problem. He refused to sign this law because this law would have given us a lot of mileage in that election. And look at the tribunal. They were not saying, oh, most of the things we put in our case are not backed by law because the electoral act was not signed. But he was the one that deliberately refused to sign the electoral act and ridiculously even said, let me sign it and let it be effective after that election. And you are here when I, I, I came here also on the issue of the CGN. I told you that the reason why they wanted to throw the CGN at the there is a plan to rig this election. And when they do that, when we go to seek redress, the institution of the, uh, uh, of the judiciary will not be able to be strong enough to give us justice. That now we what, have judges. What, what, now, what are you faulting about a five man panel who unanimously. That, that's what I'm saying. Who, most, uh, excuse uh, yeah, me, yeah. excuse me. Five man panel unanimously, point of law by point of law, dissected. All the evidence adduced by the petitioners and dismiss them. With all due respect, it, it was not political. No, 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 no. Are no, you no, describing no, no, that no. as a political judgment? Hundred more than more than hundred percent political judgment. Let me give you the reason. Let me give you this reason. There were non-valuation of facts. There were poor valuation of facts. Let me. How do you explain a situation where? The tribunal was talking about not admitting the evidence on the videotape of the Army Council board that said they didn't have the certificate of the president. And at the same time, the judge was lifting that same statement when he was trying to make case on that the president was eligible and was educated up to uh, secondary school level. Even to the extent, you are very much away, the has been 21, there's been 19 and 21 by Abakari, the Cambridge uh, uh, certificate. You said you cannot tender a document that you are not the maker. And that was the grand he struck off that our evidence. But 
the same judge accepted the, uh, the, the, the credibility of the evidence of Abakari. Abakari is not the maker of that document. That is Cambridge. So you can see a whole lot of con contradictions. So which point by point of law? He was just setting up a stage, reading things, knocking off all our grants that will make our case strong, just for him to arrive at declaring that Mr. President, not that he was qualified, but eminently qualified. And that's why people felt this was outrageous. Shetu, do, do you concur with what is just said now? Uh, for us, we believe that politics... You lead a political party. Yes, I lead a political party. Not, not, I not contest, the APC. I contested... Against Mr. Against President. And I, so and, so and, and you are satisfied with the conduct of the elections and reaffirmed again yesterday by the Presidential Election Petition Tribunal? We are satisfied because whatever will be good for this country is what we must care to us. We are democracy that just 20 years. And in these 20 years, we have been able to still the longest we've had democratically. That is not uh, a shortcut. Now that we have this chance, it's for us as Nigerians to nurture this democratic process and allow whatever wrongs and whatever we have now take out of judiciary, or judicial proclamations, is for us to quickly sit down now and put up bills and look at where do we now enhance the process so that by 2023 the process will be more better than what we have in 2019. What we had in 2019 was better than what we had in 2015. What we had in 2015 was better than what we have in 2011. So, and so I believe that by 2023 we will have a better electoral process that will help the country. And secondly, it's like football. You must, there must be a winner and there must be a loser. A winner must be magnanimous, in which Mr. President today has extended his hand to, uh, to other contestants and other political to say, look, come, let's join hand and build a country that, and create a Nigerian that will work for everybody. Now, for us that we are this, on this side, is for us to look at where electoral process were fought and where do we do better then put up a bill sent to INEC or sent to National Assembly look look at these areas this is what we should do as Nigeria accept and forget because if you look at even the advanced democracy that we are copying today the American then you find out over years they have overcome this and in fact as soon as one lose the other one just congratulate because you look at the time you spend in judicial process the money you spend in judicial process that will have helped the country to advance now that we have got to this level i urge nigerian i urge my colleagues that it is time we say let's join hand to build a great nigeria what we should do now forget about going for more judicial process join hand in one way or the other you, uh, you must not serve in government. You must say, look, this is an area that I'm perfect about, agriculture or this. Because there are, if you look at the street today, we are hungry. There are many people. Look at what they are doing to us in South Africa. This call for Nigerians to sit down and look at inward and look at how do we employ, provide employment opportunity. They are putting up, look at how do we enhance our local government, put up processing plant, put up what will better the country than using the little time to go further in judiciary process. Okay, thanks so very much, uh, uh, Shitu. Gentlemen, we'll be going on a short break. When we come back, we'll look at, you know, the pros and cons of the entire judgment. You're watching the Arise interview. we we'll still got plenty more to come. And we'll continue our assessment of the verdict by the Presidential Election Petition Tribunal dismissing the petition of the PDP and its presidential candidate in its entirety. Stay with us. You're welcome back to the Arise interview where we speak to the newsmakers as well as ordinary people doing extraordinary things around the world and featuring the voices at the heart of the stories. I am Christian Nogodo. Thanks for staying with us. 
The verdict by the Presidential Election Petition Tribunal brought to an end the six-month legal battle embarked upon by the PDP and Atiku seeking to upturn the declaration of President Muhammadu Buhari as the winner of the February 23rd presidential elections. The PDP says it will be heading to the Supreme Court intending to seek redress. That's expected. The party described the judgment as provocative, barefaced subversion of justice and a direct assault on the integrity of our nation's justice system. However, the Minister of Information and Culture, Lai Mohamed, says the PDP and Atiku should apologize to Nigerians instead of trying to appeal the judgment. Before we speak to our panelists again, first, here is a reaction from the tribunal judgment. We have never had doubt that our president won, won the election. And, um, but let me appreciate PDP for going to court. Uh, because listening to the judges, they've helped to, you know, uh, uh, rather resort to self-help. They've chosen to submit to the judicial process to review their grievances. And they've had ample opportunity to lay the allegations. And they've had opportunity to speak to prove those allegations. We've had opportunity to question those allegations. And the courts have arrived at the decision to the effect that the allegations were unfounded. And if you're in my shoes, you don't need to ask me how I feel. But I think also very important for us as a party is that in the course of this trial, there were clear attempts to uh, throw mud at the person and the integrity of the president when people question his claims to whether or not he went to secondary school and whether or not Muhammad Buhari is the same as Muhammad and whether or not he swore to force affidavit. Now, these are issues that impinges on the integrity of the president. Now, those who made those allegations have had opportunity to prove them. And as the court has found out, they were not able to prove them. And the court, listening to the lead judgment, said, our president is not just qualified, he's eminently qualified. Okay, for more on the analysis of that tribunal judgment, and like we said, looking at it from a political perspective, because I don't think uh, there is any lawyer here amongst us, let us look at the issue of you know, the certificate and what uh, the justices said. Look at it uh, from here. They said it's ruled that President Muhammadu Buhari has enough evidence, both oral and documentary, to prove that he, ha he not only attended secondary school but has the certificate are required to contest elections. It went on again to say, in reaching that conclusion, it said that the mere fact, I'm quoting verbatim, the mere fact that Buhari did not attach copies of his certificates to his form 001 submitted to INEC was not enough proof that he was not educated up to the secondary school level. How can you fault that? <laughs> well, um... I have followed the arguments from the beginning when the issue came up. And I thought we had uh, forgotten about them until the case came up as well. Well, what I can deduce here is that law is of fact and it's not of truth. Uh, secondly, that the fact that uh, you have gone to school qualifies you to contest election, any election. But it does not uh, matter if you made the uh, grade one, one aggregate or uh, yes. one or yes, uh, grade one aggregate six. Exactly. Yeah. But if you are asked for a proof, you should be able to show a proof of attendance. There are attestation certificates, even those who went to school during the colonial times. At least someone will give you an attestation certificate that you had. You, you were there. But why so, gave him attestation? Yeah, but you know... Cambridge you know, provided his so results. for the same results, for just one, one exam, you are having presenting more, many certificates. These are the issues. You see, we are not saying... Even um, Adam Soshomole just now said the judges had to resort to self-help. You know, ordinarily, I will interpret that statement differently. We must gauge what we tell Nigerians, you know. 
if the judges had to resort to self-help, so they had to go elsewhere, out, outside the processes of the law and the courts to look for answers to uh, something, you know, it, it doesn't really speak well of the conclusions from, from the formalist, uh, this thing. But what I am saying is the president has had experiences enough to qualify him to contest. And he should just refer to those ones instead of going about looking for justification for a certificate. Because that, for me, is what the, we spend the entire time trying to prove. Going to Cambridge, going to uh, Katsina Middle School, Provisional School, and all of those, and bringing other people, bringing an old man to come and say, look, I don't even believe that uh, the judge was right in saying that an old man had testified, a 77-year-old man had testified. After, uh, and because in our culture, Old men don't lie. But I know that there are 77 year old people who rape girls, who do wrong things on the streets. So, what are we saying? Are we now taking uh, evidence of those ones to mean if I commit a crime today, I just simply need to look for a 77 year old man to come and say he didn't do it? And the man that I may be bringing may have raped? Have we checked the integrity of the person? But that is for the APC. And I thought also that the PDP did not do its work well. Because if you want to prove that the world is round, you don't just stand in one place or go from point A in a straight line and come back to say that's the world is round. You need to go round. So you raise the bar of expectation, of witness expectation, of evidence expectation. Then you need to prove it beyond reasonable doubt by connecting your evidence, your paper evidence, and all of that to the point of uh, the offense. Yeah, exactly so what the there has tribunal. Been a mix. Yeah, a mix, exactly there, what the that, tribunal that chairman link, said. Yeah, yes, that, that link that they just heaped, you know, uh, of bundles of papers, papers and the rest without matching it. Exactly, you know, with and the in, witness, you know, uh, and in election election petition, the most important person is the presiding officer or those at the polling unit. You should be able to match them. We, if we don't match them, we cannot expect the, the papers to speak for, for those themselves. people and not a third party or if the second party, that would be amount to hearsay. So the PDP also ought to have taken cognizance of some of these things, in some of the um, uh, you know, matters in issue. But uh, perhaps it was an oversight. And well, Ugo Chinere, uh, you are of the CUPP, and you heard the chairman of the APC, uh, Adam Soshomole, asking the PDP to apologize, you know, it's like for wasting the time of the country and the rest that, uh, or rather, Lai Mohammed, uh, the Minister of Information, you know, uh, like, look, there's nothing to this thing. You, 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 uh, the opposition party was just uh, crying wolf when there was none. You see, I don't want to waste my time on Oshimola and the method they have been using. These people live in a different world. They, this is not in Cruzizas, Burundi, or Mobutu, because where you have that kind of, when you rob people, you have the audacity to solve those kind of things. Let's focus on the key issues here. And I want to go straight to the issue of saying that we did not prove the uh, issue of a uh, false uh, declaration. Apart from whether the president was educated up to secondary school level, there is also a clear case of false information. If you go to section 31 or 33 of the Electoral Act, if somebody makes any environment in his form CF001 and turns out to be false, you can approach even a state high court. So it's even a pre-election matter and also a post-election matter. And upon that ground, you can nullify the person's candidature. And I want to draw your attention to a judgment of the Supreme Court that was delivered four weeks ago, just four weeks ago, which the Court of Appeal is also fully aware of which is between Modi, but the House of Rep member from Yola North and Yola South, who is representing the APC. The matter went to the Supreme Court. The man made false information. He's from CF001. And the Supreme Court had for providing that false information that your candidature, your election as a member of has already is nullified. And it's on that ground that the PDP candidate who came second was declared the winner of that election. And we were saying that, have the president made false information? Yes, you can be a president even with an auto mechanic certificate if it's the equivalent of WAYEC. That's not uh, what, what we're arguing. What the president provided was that he, have, he was educated up to school SAT, and I have the school SAT, and the school SAT is with the military uh, uh, board. And we proved that that document is not with the military board. 
And the president knows that. That's why you see from day one, he said, I bring a piece of paper from the principal in uh, Castina, or they bring another one from, K they keep manufacturing this, or they bring uh, Wayek after over 8, 10, 12 years of running election to come and give them another document. There's something wrong with this whole document issue, because if you have it, you have it. It's one single document. But you have seen for over 10 years, they have been running up and then bringing all sort of piece of paper to prove this. But now that we have established that the president at the time he ran the election provided false information, what we have expe expected the tribunal to do was to analyze that information, nullify that candidature, and uphold the election of the person who came second. And also I want to uh, uh, draw your attention to the issue of uh, um, uh, tampering with uh, uh, figures, uh, wrong computation and so on and so which we called witnesses, even some of them from INEC, somewhere that were presiding officer. INEC did not even uh, uh, contravert what we did. So by that, they even abandoned their case when they closed it without calling witness to counter because they should have produced other presiding officers who should have counter what we said. The, the tribunal did not evaluate that evidence properly. The, the witnesses we called were enough to prove that there was a, um, uh, the election was conducted in breach of the provisions of the electoral act. They didn't look at that. And also another important thing, they did not evaluate the evidence of the witness of the president. Remember the man, the, uh, another old man who came and said the president was his classmate, they went to the army, and they did not give their certificate to the army. In the, in the, in the judgment, we didn't see the tribunal analyzing the weight of that evidence. They parried over it. They didn't even mention it, only to be talking about the man that is 70 years. If a man is 70 years and he comes to go, so whatever a man that is 70 years says, is, it, it turns out to be legitimate. So to us, this was turning the law upside down. All the principles that they deposited yesterday went back reversing all the gains were made in our electoral process. Okay, uh, Shetu, we, we have just about a minute to, to break. You just want to attempt a quick you know, input into this uh, certificate issue because, see, I have uh, the tribunal's judgment here again. They said the tribunal, you know, well, I think I mentioned that, that there is no law that requires a candidate to attach his certificate to form 001. That's you the know, mistake was making. There is a law. Okay, maybe when we we'll come back, you prove it beyond, you know, uh, these. Uh, uh, ju uh, the judgment and the justices. You're still watching the Arise interview. We've got plenty more still ahead. Stay with us. You're welcome back to the Arise interview. Okay, Shitu, uh, you were going to respond to the issue of the tribunal's very clear statement yes. about the certificate uh, the saga. Uh, saga. Well, yes. if it's a saga, it's yes. been resolved yes. and yes. the rest. And uh, they say that there is no law asking, you know, candidates to attach their certificate to 001. So the fact that the president even attended secondary school is just enough requirement as demanded uh, by the electoral law yeah. and INEC as the uh, uh, champion. Yeah. So you agree with, I mean, uh, the tribunal's uh, judgment now? Look, this is somebody that become even head of state, minister of petroleum in this country, governor of eastern, uh, uh, northeast in Nigeria. Before he comes back again, he has gone to several courts before from captain, to, uh, uh, to major, major, major to lieutenant, lieutenant to and colonel, to uh, 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 general, general, to, general yeah. to major general, mm. to head of state, to become president again. What education do you want? He has traveled vast. He has gone to many courses in India, in U.S. What else? What? At which education is it about the country? Is there about? I, I think uh, it's an issue that we should just uh, forget and look and move on and move on with Nigeria because Nigeria need this governance as yesterday. We we need to move our people out of poverty and move them, and we need to look at people's plight. That will help this country. Not issue of going to judiciary for this for that. It's good. It has deepened democracy. It has deepened uh, the, the process. And in this judgment, we have even seen gray areas that we will now use to put up a lot of... Just like in the judgment, they yeah. dismissed the, the APC's uh, allegation that uh, the PDP presidential candidate 
it's, it's not in Nigeria, Nigeria and, and the yes. rest. And yes. there it was thrown away. So, Ugo Chinere, you wanted to tell me about yes. uh, uh, the uh, law that says you should attach yes. your certificates. Yes. I know a lot of uh, politicians who, you know, held political offices that didn't attach, even some who are medical doctors, who, some who are professors, they just basically said mm. school certificates as required. You see, you see this problem has been with us since 1990, this from CF001. This problem always comes up when people say they have PhD, they have this. If you go and say you have auto mechanic certificate as the equivalent of why you won't have this problem. If you say you have primary school certificate, if the president has said he has primary school certificate or military trainings, he's eligible to be to run for office of president. The problem is always what you say you have, turning out not to be what you have. Remember nineteen nine when Salis Buhari said he had Toronto certificate. He was eligible to go to House of Rep, having even gone to primary school. But he said he had Toronto and when it was proved that he didn't have Toronto, how they have to force him out for force information under uh, the form CF001. Now, if you go to form CF001, form 001 was made portion to the electoral act. So it's a legal document. If you look at the place, it says few education qualification. Under it, it says attach the, uh, what they call it, the certificate, the ones you have listed that you have. Under, you see, it's always written in red. So the president is the one that said that he, has, he was educated up to the secondary school certificate and that he has the, uh, the, the WAEC or what or whatever they call it. That's why if you look at Mr. President, from, you see two affidavits. One is the one that is inside the form CF001, the one that said all the information provided to the best of my knowledge is true. And then another one is a separate affidavit that he made separately in a high court where he said, because having said you are educated up to school certificate level, you are supposed to attach it. Now he made another affidavit that those documents are with the army board. And what we are saying that well, at the time he made that affidavit, well, those documents with the army board, those documents have been proven not to be with the army board. So as long as we are concerned, the form CF01 is a legal document. And now look at what the appeal court have done, which is very dangerous for our electoral process. They are now telling our young people that you don't even need to even produce primary school certificate. You can say you have a, a Ladipo auto mechanic certificate. Just make an affidavit for 500 naira and then put it and then you get elected. So these things they have done is going to reverse the gains of our election. And it's going to encourage all sorts of substandard things going to happen in 2023. But, but with a kind of uh, unanimous decision and overwhelming uh, uh, conclusion of, of the judgment, you know, you, you've headed a mass mobilization organization and the rest. Do you think it is expedient, wise to go to the final appellate arbiter for redress? Well, um before I even go to that, a lot of people have been disqualified in the past, unanimously, by justices of our courts, uh, for failing to produce relevant certificates you know, in an election. A lot of people have lost their elections as a result of that. So if today we bring it up and reverse what uh, the courts had done before, the precedents that have been set before, then there is, uh, we are sending, setting a lacuna for criminal justice and electoral and the electoral process going forward. However, I am not in doubt about the capacity or the capability of the president to contest an election because he has proven that uh, he went to months from a secondary school and after months he must have been given a certificate. Absolutely. Let him coach those ones. He has attended trainings up to uh, universities in the US and everywhere. If he wants to put all of those, he can put it, but not to begin to look around for, to justify a claim that, uh, you know, it creates some doubts. And we are nobody, this uh, is the actions of the president that will create that doubt or that doubt on, the, on his integrity, not that people are trying to impugn one on, uh, on him. And uh, yes, um, we will have to begin to do what I may call information substitution, to correct and to urge people, citizens, that it is, you know, you have to go to school to acquire the best of education. You may not necessarily acquire this education to contest just for the purpose of the contest of an election, presidential election, but you need it for other things. You need it to, not just to justify your skill and talent, but it opens your window to the world. Because the world, elsewhere, it is not about uh, whether you have certificate or you don't have, or you're presenting, uh, is the knowledge and the skill you have acquired that takes you further in addition to the, the character that you are bringing to the table. So for me, really, 
uh, the, or an orientation process has to commence. And uh, that is why I am looking at... That, that is one big failing uh, of government. Yes, you know, yes. Orientation yes. of the people. This is over time. What this, was your own experience This is like over there? time. It's the same thing. It's is it funding? Grossly underfunded. You have to look for sources of funding elsewhere. And those who will give you funding, I only fund you for their own objectives, not the objectives of the nation. And because it's your, your role within the mandate of governance, I mean, within the structure of governance, is to project some of the values that these people want. They, they, that's just, they, leave it, uh, they, they will go to fund your process. So government really need to pay attention. I have said uh, times to that number that the National Orientation Agency is under-recognized, under-utilized, and therefore the nation is not getting the full benefit of uh, its existence. Now they are even talking it away and wanting to hide it. There is a difference between the National Orientation Agency and the Ministry of Information, or the information. In fact, you know that there is a dif difference in the definition of information and the definition of communication. And the earlier government realizes that and begin to create a national narrative that will engender national solidarity because People have drawn a line and said, look, it is enough. We have to change this government. We, I mean, this uh, uh, nation, we have to do this. We have to build hopes of science, hope of um, you know, uh, mind empowerment, and so forth and so on. We will not get the, need, the needed um, ELISA to do what we ought to do with even the opportunities that we have to serve in government. Um, Ugo Chine, let me take you again to another very key aspect of the tribunal's judgment, the issue of server or no server. Uh, on that uh, server issue, mm. I give to the tribunal the aspect of the ruling that has to do with uh, not having the legal framework. And that was the same thing I said here months ago, that if he don't sign the amended electoral act, that will create a where people will go to this election, do all sort of impunity. And when you take this matter to Supreme Court or to appeal court or to the first tribunal, they will say that this is not backed by the law. The, so, so, the president so, so deliberated. So no, okay. no, no. Apart from celebrating, yes, the technicalities were all saying, oh, the president have escaped it. But the president deliberately set this landmine. He did it deliberately to the extent that he said, OK, I will sign this under the condition that it will become effective after my own election. For a man that you talked about that is a man of integrity, a man that likes things that will benefit the nation, where lies the integrity of the president where he could not sign the letter that would have allowed for electronic it's transmission not, of the result? Yeah, I don't think if it's it was a matter of so integrity. It was about, it was no, about the president is willing to do anything that will keep him in office. So it's not about integrity. It's about him remaining in office. Because if he's a statesman, why didn't he sign the law? Other people signed that law. Jonathan signed their own. He, he, he explained it very you know, in a very simple way, that it was too close. Okay, hold before. Excuse me. No, no, why let, I, I want to correct you on that. Let me explain what Mr. President said in not appending his signature to the amended electoral act. I can quote him verbatim. That it was too close to the election for the understanding of the people. We're talking of a whole digitization and, of a process. And I'm telling and you. We're talking of yes. those in the rural, rural communities, in the backwaters of Nigeria. And how are you going to? Before we let go to. No, no, before. Let me. Let, let me lie to you, man. You see, there's ECOWAS Convention, in which, because they don't want to have seat type leaders, there's a convention that six months to an election. I know what. No, uh, uh, the protocol on good governance. No, no, the protocol that yeah. no nation should amend the electoral act. Six months election. Now, let me let, let, then, let me explain because to you. Because so, so I, no, no, no. We are in court on this matter. Then, no, uh, let me explain to you. The the amendment process started one year to the election. The amendment process was con completed in 2018. Now, let me. The first one was sent to the president. By February, he sent it back. That's what I'm saying. Now, stop this argument of oh, it was too close. Then, no, the president had this law almost one year to the election. But you had the, to put in the protocol. No, no. Before, now. before the cr protocol, yeah. uh, that was a, we are the one that were even raising the protocol. Sign this thing before you go and use the protocol as an excuse, which I said on this table. And now, when the president sent it back, they thought, and look at the excuse. You said there was ease, wars, and all those kind of problems. They amended. You saw each time they bring it. We'll 
just say, okay, the, the ease is not correct. They will go and change it. Then they break. What is Attorney General's office doing? You have read the law. You saw this mistake. Why are you pointing one by one until you go to the last minute of two, one month to election and say, oh, I cannot sign it that because it's too close to the election. He deliberately did it because the APC know that if we have done electronic transmission, if we have put a situation whereby if a letter officer makes an announcement that does not tally with the vote that was, you know, gotten from the polling unit, you go for five years imprisonment. Most of the people who were involved in this tampering with figures and all sorts of impunity will not have done it. So he denied the nation that. And let me ask you, okay, why have the president and the national assembly not considered it a matter of urgent national importance to assign the law now? Okay, uh, we'll uh, take up that when we return after the break. You're still watching the Arise interview. Stay with us. All right, you welcome back to the Arise interview, and I still have uh, Michael Miri, former DG of uh, the National Orientation Agency, and today is the chairman of Timbuktu Media um, Solutions. Ikenga Ugochiere, uh, very fiery as always, the spokesperson of the Coalition of United Political Parties, and uh, Kabiru Shitu is the chairman of the Advanced People's Democratic Alliance. Some people would even think that uh, you are of the ruling uh, party APC, but you are the chairman of uh, the Advanced People's Democratic uh, Alliance. You were given the viewpoint on what ECOWAS protocol says on elections or amending you know, electoral laws in ECOWAS uh, countries. Go yes. On. Uh, you see, in order not to have sit tight leaders, leaders and to cope against this, that protocol will come about. And secondly, I want to point out to us here that, look, if that bill, uh, that electoral act had been signed into law at that dying moment, one, where will you have purchased those equipments? What time do you have to uh, bring in those equipment. That's the issue of logistics, logistics, which we saw that made the elections election to even to be, be postponed. For a second. When will you have trained the staffs and acquaint with it? And there are a lot of flaws that we will have caused this elect electoral process some havoc. Therefore, I believe that it is now that we now take our time, go through that elector uh, electoral bill and look at where we will improve, even from the judgment that we have now. There are areas we need to improve. Like area you just say, Atiku is not a Nigerian by birth. Now the judiciary say, look, so that area too will be amended. And I even have an area, even Abuja, where you say Abuja has no indigenous, it has indigenous. All this area will be built into this this is the time that we need to as quickly as possible as politicians and political parties sit down and look at this amendment put it in good order and send it to the national assembly as a bill or, or call the attention of the executives to the amendment we feel will help the, uh, the electoral process so it's not too late i mean even uh, if uh, that uh, um, uh, electoral uh, uh, act as amended is signed into law. It will still, you know, ginger the kind of revolution you are looking at in the electoral process. It's for the Senate President and the Speaker to, you know, send it back to the President so that he can be able to sign it. But like I said before, they refuse to do that because we have intelligence because of uh, Kogi and bias election. But it's high time they send it back to the press. So we can send this one and then start working on other future amendments as a result of the tribunal ruling. But the point is, this, why are they not talking about it? Why are they not considering it something of urgent national importance? So you see, you're beginning to agree now with the ruling of the tribunal because you said, I mean, it now becomes germane with the flaws pointed out, whether in giving evidence, whether the days for, you know, uh, any appellants to come and give evidence and the rest. Yes. It's, right? very, it's, it's a matter of urgent national importance that they send back the law for the president to sign. Uh, Mike, w w you were saying something earlier that there's so much work to be yeah. done, you know, to um, kind of reinvigorate uh, the electoral process and 
you know, even the judiciary too. Not just uh, these two, but Nigerians too. Mm -hmm. We need to make Nigerians feel the know their country and have a country. And like I said earlier, it is not about ruling a country, but leading a nation. We need to have leaders all over the place that will make us begin to look inwards to mobilize our real natural national resources, not just for country development, but for self-advancement and self-preservation. These things are possible. And how do we do it? I insist, because that is my area, that communication, strategic communication is key. It's key in the manner we talk to our people. We can't have I'm sorry, but I will mention Lai Mohammed because I saw him say Nigerians, I mean, uh, the PDP should apologize to Nigerians or to the president. I think these are the kind of communication that sends the wrong message. He should be strategic as a professional. I wouldn't speak to Nigerians that way or to even a fellow political party that is just coming out of contest with me. We are not in, in the mood for uh, partisan contestation. You know, it's not a period for, 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 for political electioneering and so forth and so on. As Minister of Information, or as Minister in the Federal Republic of Nigeria, you communicate to Nigerians in the manner that they will love your government and love you, that they will love your policies and help you achieve your goals and vision for the nation. But, you know, a few days ago, the same line Mohammed was begging Nigerians. And now, because of a favorable judgment, you just flip. It is not a sign of a good communicator at all. With due respect to him, he was my boss. We had worked together before, but I must point out, and like I said, I'm looking at if the two were, sides. If you were still in Enway, would you be telling him that? Well, if I were in Enway, they know my pedigree. I have refused to be partisan. We didn't carry that organization into partisanship. Even when the PDP appointed me into their publicity committee, I resigned. I wrote a letter. I said I cannot do it because this is a national institution. Unless I leave this place, I cannot do that. In, if I was in NOA, I will tell him, I, I'm, I'm sure that he will, we will have created a, uh, we would have, even if at the ministry level, nothing is created, at, my, at the level of the NOA, would have created a strategic uh, a team that would work on the communication aspects of the president, of the government. Not necessarily of the president, but of the government of Nigeria. We cannot, uh, you know, be sending wrong signals with the things we say. Our language, our body language, our uh, disposition, our, you know, everything we do in the uh, project Ikenga. space should yeah. suggest L that... Let me uh, come to Ikenga. The PDP has said it's going to appeal, you know, that judgment. You are now a member of the PDP. I don't know if the PDP is part of your the, coalition. A, a, a leading also. member of the CUPP also. Uh -huh. The 57 parties. You know, uh -huh. but haven't, you know, agreed that there are quite a number of flaws in the uh, evidence adduced, you know, by the appellant and uh, the judgment pointed was copious about all this. Would you, even as a spokesperson of CPP, be, uh, CUPP, be advising that you go to the Supreme Court? Would it not as be a, an of, exercise in futility, of, yes. apart from being, you know, a fundamental right? As of yesterday, it would have been possible to be in the Supreme Court yesterday night after that judgment would have been there. No, you yesterday. have 21 days. <coughs> that, no, no, I'm telling you mm. that is, is, is of urgent national importance. The opposition is like carrying, the, the, is like the opposition now is the last hope of the people of getting something better from now to 2023. If we don't go to the people, many one, for the sake of our democracy, for the sake of our constitutional governance, for the sake of our people, for the sake of our electoral process, we need to be at the Supreme Court. And also for the sake of justice, to retrieve what was stolen from our people. But you're spawning even the <coughs> president's <coughs> overture and the rest. And <laughs> she too, who is the chairman of you know, uh, another political party say, no, let's put hands together with Mr. President. Isn't it, Shito? That's for the country to move forward. Because we people... To, yeah. Yes, we need, to, we need to cater for Nigerians. We need to look inward. They are driving our people from South Africa, from Indonesia, from everywhere. And we must put her now to develop to a build process a united and build Nigeria. United Nigeria. Uh, my, Where in the okay. works for everybody. What I'm saying in the interim, we there is we, we 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 cannot celebrate a vacuum. We have someone who is steering the ship of state, rightly or wrongly, he is there. 
So we need, for, national, for our own nation, we need to work to save our country. Yeah. But it is not that it should stop the PDP from seeking justice. If they have to seek justice and it will further uh, the scope of our laws, so be it. But for now, we cannot leave the country, leave the country to total, uh, to, to hurt us. We must, we, we must stand by it. For me, it's neither Buhari nor Jonathan nor anybody. It's about Nigeria, where my children will be raised in, where my future and their future and the future of other people is, 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 is tied to. It's not about these people who have four years or three years to remain in government that I'm, I'm doing or I'm going to be doing what I am doing. I want to be seen as a truly Nigerian uh, citizen who believes that out of all of us, we all, over 200, almost 200 million of us, can't be wrong. There must be a starting point to good things. And it is within us. No angel, no angel will come and clean the street for us. It is us, entirely us, that will do it. So therefore, let us look inwards. Let us begin to make do right what is wrong. Let the PDP go and put its own house in order because it has internal challenges. Part of its problem in this case is All the right. PDP itself. All right, gentlemen. Uh, I think uh, it's been uh, a very interesting one hour, well, even though it's not possible to exhaust all that there is to discuss uh, on this issue. But let me thank you, uh, Mike O'Mary, former DG National Orientation Agency and chairman of Timbuktu Media uh, Solutions. And of course, my very fiery friend, Ikenga Ugochini, a <laughs> spokesman coalition of United Political Parties. I don't know why you don't have chief to your name yet. Or he has red card. All right. And Kabiru Shitu is the chairman of the Advanced People's Democratic Alliance. Thanks so very much, gentlemen, for watching, uh, for being part of the program. And that's it for this edition of the Arise interview. I am Christian Obodo. Bye bye.